Hi, I'm Elias Gwynn, Applications Engineer with Benchmark Media Systems. I'm here doing an exclusive video for Audio Advisor talking about the DAC-1 USB. It offers four total digital inputs, XLR for AES-EBU, optical for Toslink optical SPDIF type connection, coaxial for SPDIF type coaxial, and this one features the USB input, which is our advanced USB 9624 capable USB, natively, native USB solution, so that it's compatible with your computer immediately without, without installing any software or uh, custom drivers. Uh, it's, a, it's a bit transparent solution, which means that all the original data that's a part of your music file or on your CD will be transferred transferred to the DAC-1 without any sort of modification whatsoever. The DAC-1 USB features XLR balanced outputs and it also features unbalanced RCA outputs. The two, the two modes that it offers is calibrated and variable and, and then also a mute position uh, and I will describe those for you right now. The variable position allows you to use the front panel true analog volume control to control the output level of the device. When it's in fixed calibrated level, you will get a constant level output which, will, which is better served for if you're using a, a separate preamplifier. The DAC1 USB can be used as a preamplifier. It can be used, it can drive an amplifier directly and the volume can be controlled using this front panel volume control. The front panel volume control always controls the volume of the built-in HPA2 headphone amplifier. The HPA2 headphone amplifier is our proprietary headphone amplifier. It it's, should be noted for its zero ohm output impedance, which means that it can drive any, headphone amp any type of headphones, any impedance, without having severe distortion. The input switch switches between all the different inputs of the DAC1 USB. We have again the XLR, the Toslink optical, the coaxial, and then the USB. The DAC1 USB is especially well noted for its immunity to jitter. It achieves this through an internal clocking mechanism called ultralock. The way ultralock works is it takes the digital samples from the source, from the incoming stream, it puts it in a buffer and holds it there so that the incoming clock is completely removed and completely isolated from the conversion system. And then an internal clock that's built with extremely low jitter and that's only a millimeter away from the DAC chip itself will determine the, the time that the samples get pulled out of the buffer. And by using our own internal clock, to pull those samples out one at a time. They have lower jitter than any source can achieve. The true analog volume control is a very important feature of the DAC1 USB because it maintains the dynamic range and signal to noise ratio of the converter. Digital volume controls will limit your dynamic range and your signal to noise ratio. And analog volume ICs will, can cause severe distortion and noise because you're trying to pack too much circuit into a single chip. This is a true analog gain control. This is the ideal way to control volume. The analog circuit of the DAC1 USB has a 500 kilohertz bandwidth. This, this allows ultrasonics to pass through cleanly whereas otherwise it could be distorted and folded back into the audio bandwidth as intermodulation distortion. The DAC1 USB features uh, new op amps in the output stage. Uh, these new op amps are the newest, feature, uh, the newest offerings from National Semiconductor. They're called the LM4562. They're worth looking into. They're a great part. Uh, they, they contribute to the sound if uh, because they allow the DAC1 USB to lower the output impedance, which will, in effect, uh, maintain your high frequency performance. Um, a, lot of, a lot of times, 
um, high frequency is attenuated and you'll lose some of those high frequencies because of a higher output impedance and the, the new op amps allow the lowest possible output impedance to maintain your high frequency response. The USB input on the DAC1 USB is a, is a proprietary USB interface called Advanced USB. It delivers 96 kilohertz 24-bit signal path, data path, from the computer to the DAC1 USB. And it's all based on native drivers, so there's never any compatibility issues and there's never any transparency issues. The, the data will get to this cleanly. The 24-bit interface is very important, even if you only listen to 16-bit audio like CDs. And the reason why is because in a computer, this 16-bit word can go through calculations that increase the word length simply because that's the way digital calculations work. The word length can increase. The problem with that is that if the, if the path is limited to 16-bit, you can truncate the last 8 bits and what that will do is that will increase digital distortion in the audio. All of these things add up to a device that is incredibly transparent and incredibly pure sounding and in fact it will stand up to any DAC at any price point. It is one of the most transparent and high performing DAC on the market. I'm Elias Gwynn from Benchmark and this has been an exclusive video for Audio Advisor.